to take you down the rabbit hole of risk and talk about my most dangerous investment I have ever made in my career. Ladies, gentlemen, MindMed is the only company I truly believe has the potential to turn a $1,000 investment into a $300,000 return. And I know that sounds pretty absurd. And I'm not an investment advisor. I can only tell you what I'm going to do. So in this video, I'm going to break down my thesis on this company and why I'm investing in it. But before we do, I want to break down the timeline that led me up to the moment of actually making this video for you guys. And this story goes all the way back to 2014. Now, I was roughly 23 years old and just started stumbling into the investment world. And one of the first investments I ever made was an extremely risky investment in a penny stock called Canopy Growth Corp. Now, if you've never heard of Canopy Growth Corp before, it was a tiny little company here in Canada that would later become a multi-billion dollar corporation, taking my little investment here of $8,000 I built over that four year span into a 30 thousand dollar investment being one of my first home runs in my entire investing career where I would liquidate it luckily before the entire MJ stocks crash. After making this home run, I became very obsessed with the CEO of this company and his name was Bruce Litton. He would literally revolutionize an entire new industry in the markets, but he would later be fired by a company called Constellation Brands that had the majority share stake in Canopy Growth Corp. And I thought this was the worst decision ever because they thought he wasn't producing enough profits, but it was because of the regulatory issues the MJ sector was facing at the time. And I actually had shares in Constellation Brands and I ended up selling them after this because I thought it was a very foolish decision as I had a lot of faith in Bruce Litton. But I continued to follow Bruce because I mean a man who could start a multi-billion dollar corporation. I mean he's got some value behind him and it'd be neat to see where he ended up. And when I found out that he got hired by this company called MyMed I became extremely interested in it and I found out yeah it was another pharmaceutical company based around hallucinogenics. And this company wasn't publicly traded. So I went out of my way and I sent them an email asking them, well, what are you guys doing? Are you doing angel rounds? Like what are your investor like presentations like? Sure enough, they were raising money and they called me, told me what they were doing. I'm not accredited. So obviously I could not invest with them. And they were telling me what was going on and sending me all their emails. And I was kind of like flip flopping on the idea of what they were trying to accomplish. And I later forgot about it. But my boy, Kevin O'Leary uh, is one of the largest investors now in this company, which made me turn my head back over to why is he investing in this junkie penny stock that doesn't really have any time horizon on when you might get paid back. Started listening to Kevin O'Leary, Bruce Slitton, and a bunch of other members on the board, which are high up pharmaceutical executives. And I said, you know what? Why are all these guys flocking to this company? Like what is so disruptive about it? And then I found out the true passion behind what MindMed is trying to solve. As an investor, we're constantly looking for problems that people need solving. The bigger the problem, usually the harder it is to solve something like an iPhone. But if you can solve that problem, it ends up being extremely valuable valuable to the shareholders and the problems that MindMed are trying to solve. These are problems that have not been disrupted in the last 50 years and the solutions to the problems are not good solutions. They come with severe side effects and health issues. And the problems we're talking about here is addiction, anxiety, and depression. MindMed is actually claiming they can solve all of these problems and more with no negative health effects coming from the treatment and no addictive aspects after the treatment with something like you'd get with a Xanax or a Ritalin. And they're also claiming they can cure any kind of opioid addiction without any real negative health effects and you don't have to wean yourself off something like Oxy or heroin. And that is such a profound statement. I don't think people realize the impact of it. These are multi-trillion dollar problems this company's trying to solve. And I'm gonna break it down for you in this video. So ladies, gentlemen, let's jump. Hop right into this. Drop it. investors alike and the synopsisize exactly what this company thinks they can achieve. They're trying to remove the psychoactive and hallucinogenic effects from LSD and use the compounds to treat current problems we have with um, ADD, uh, opioid addiction. We're talking about depression and anxiety, guys. And apparently it is a way more healthy and safer and more accurate alternative for treating the problem than the current drugs we have available. And just to take a look at their website here real quick, guys. I mean, you can see they kind of lay it out here because they also want to try the hallucinogenic therapy 
side of it, but I think they're primarily focused on this side of it, derived from psychedelics, zero to negligible hallucinogenic effects, doctor prescribed, pharmacy pickup, take it home. And then on the hallucinogenic side, a dose of um, generic psychedelics, which causes a hallucinogenic experience, direct supervision by therapists and doctors in clinical treatment only. Now, this is extremely controversial to society, and I'm not here to tell you what these drugs have the capability of achieving. You're going to have to do your own research for that, as I have, which is what led me to finding this to be such an interesting disruptive technology because it hasn't been looked at since the 50s and 60s. And back then, they did a ton of this research and found a lot of these insane, healthy, positive effects. But unfortunately, society kind of wanted to overdose on it, take massive amounts, go and party. And they kind of put bad stigmas around it, leading it to being illegal. But now, in this new realm, we're Facts don't care about your feelings. And even companies like Johnson & Johnson were able to get ketamine legal for certain health effects for treating depression. This is an actual drug you snort, you get from Johnson & Johnson prescribed from your doctor. And this is only recent as of last year. Now, mind you, they did some chemical alterations because they just wanted the, the chemicals that come out of it that treat those problems without giving you the hallucinogenic and the uppity effects. But getting back into this, this company was discovered by a guy that was working in Silicon Valley that found a lot of his friends were basically microdosing LSD to get themselves off, you know, stimulants. And they would just take little bits, not enough to hallucinate, but they found it completely, um, basically subsided any like opioid or stimulant addiction they had. And this led this gentleman going down this really deep rabbit hole that led us to where we are today. And the team that he has created is a top tier team. Now, not only are we talking about Bruce Linton from Canopy Growth Corp, guys, we have pharmacists that took extreme drugs to basically FDA or approval and they're all on board here and they're all on board making one hell of an A team for one of the most risky investments that you could ever make. And the reason this is such a high risk investment is it either goes one of two ways. The drugs either get approved and they solve these multi-trillion dollar problems and this becomes, you know, a multi-billion dollar corporation or they don't get FDA approval and that $160 million worth of investments become worth absolutely zero. But how do I come to this conclusion that this company has the potential to turn $1,000 into a $300,000 investment. Again, guys, all you have to do is a little bit of research and look at the scale of something like Xanax, a horribly um, addictive drug to deal with anxiety and other problems like depression with 44 million prescriptions writ written each year. And you can't even find update information on this without really digging down into the companies that produce these drugs. Even with ADHD pills, guys, we're talking about 16.4 million prescriptions. And this data only goes as far as 2017. The opioid crisis makes up for more than 2.5 five trillion dollars over the last four years and this is just the cost of the opioid crisis not the actual drugs themselves we're just talking about trying to treat this stuff and ideally what i've done here is i basically presume that this company has the full capability of being worth somewhere around 50 billion dollars and if i'm being honest i think that's even conservative and again that is just my opinion but it comes from the light of looking at these multi-trillion dollar problems that haven't been solved properly with any drugs we currently have on the market that market has the potential of about $50 billion. And then essentially divided by the $160 million market cap my med currently has, that gives us a 312 times potential on our money, which essentially if we invested $1,000, well, that gives us $312,000 return. Now that is an insanely bold number to be throwing out there. And I know that. So what I want to do is I want to share with you a video uh, highlights from the CEO along with what Kevin O'Leary thinks when he started investing in this company. And it's basically a lottery ticket, ladies and gents. I've never seen a penny stock exactly like this. It literally complete binary outcome. You're either going to make thousands of dollars off your investment or it's going to completely go to zero. You're, you're buying yourself a 50 cent lottery ticket. So ladies, gentlemen, take a listen. Are you going to pursue recreational psychedelics? Because if you are, I don't even want to waste my time talking about it. I have zero interest in getting involved. And he said, no, we have no interest. We want to go through FDA approval on these medicines through the trial system and bring medicines to the market. Okay, well, that was... That was interesting. I said, really? Okay, well, tell me more. And then in, in, in my shop, we have a, a team of people that do due diligence. I get a lot of deals thrown at me, you know, just a lot. And I, and I see a lot of stuff. And I showed this one to the head of O'Leary Ventures, a guy named Alex Kenji, who's very strong in doing due diligence across a wide range of sectors. And, and he always does the work on these things. And he went to town on, on MindMed. He ripped into that thing for weeks. And JR can speak of the misery he went through with, with uh, Alex. But that's just the way it is. If you want me as an investor, my guys have to get on board. And Alex, for the first, and the, way, and the way I run my shop, and you'll find this intriguing, 
I say to Alex, okay, if you're gonna if you're gonna do the due diligence on an opportunity, pick any company. I've got a portfolio of over 50 companies, and you like it, and you you go craft a deal for me. You have to eat your cooking. I'll lend you 15% of the position, and you have to borrow it from me because if it goes to zero, you owe me the money. And if you don't take the full 15% from me, then I'm not doing the deal. That way I know his co his kahunas are in the right place on any deal. <laughs> and and we, we've made, he's made a lot of money with me. We've, we've had a long relationship and it's a great way to, I have capital deploy. I have every day I have capital deploy. So he finds the deals, he works them, he takes 15%, I do them. This is the only time in history in, I don't know how many years it's been, a lot of years, where he said to me, look, boss, I'm taking the full 15% and I want to let you know I'm investing more than you are. What has got you so jazzed on this deal? And he had done a tremendous, JR could speak to the amount of due diligence mm -hmm. Alex did, but he really sold me on the fact that he was willing to take that kind of risk. And and, and I, in fact, then increased my, I can't have Alex only more than me, so I, I, <laughs> I increased my position in, in subsequent rounds. But you gotta understand this investment. For everybody that we're talking about, this is a binary outcome. It's either a zero, because none of these medicines work, or it's a huge outcome. Because the problems you're trying to, and that's why I'm so intrigued, the problems you're trying to solve are, are massive, multi-billion dollar problems. You know, opioid addiction, alcoholism, ADD, anxiety. They're billion dollar businesses. Coming out of this thing, how many people are going to have anxiety, worried about their jobs, you know, alcoholism, opioid addiction? We got to solve these problems. And there haven't been any new medicines forever in this space. And so now, instead of taking some crappy medicine that has horrible side effects, if your child has ADD, potentially, a microdosing strategy might work better. I don't know yet, but I want to find out. And I certainly want to be an investor if it works. If any of these trials work, this company will be extremely valuable. That's my investment thesis. You know, every once in a while, you investment, there's different kinds of investments. There's, you know, there's, there's ones where you're, you're, you're paying a multiple of cash flow and you're trying to determine, you know, what the yield on a position is. I, I do all those investments. I'm involved in that sector. I, mean, I do that with, um, in the ETF world where I participate. This is not that kind of investment. This is a highly speculative binary outcome investment of zero, or something immense. And 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 you, it's very hard to determine where on that spectrum you are at this time. The only thing the company can do is, is generate data as the industry has to. And so, but now we finally got enough interest in it, primarily in my views, personal opinion, because nothing else works. It, it just doesn't, it, and it's such horrible medicine that, that you, who wants to give a child Ritalin? Like who wants to give, right. You know, that's horrible stuff, but, but, but a frustrated parent has no choice. What do they do? And so, you know, I look at it that way and say, Adderall, I, I wouldn't give that to an animal, but a frustrated, a frustrated parent, parent has no choice. Yeah. And so, so we got to give them choice. That's what this research is about. There's, you know, there's, a, there's an aspect to it of solving a big problem, and that's what always was attractive to the whole thing. And then of course, the potential for it to be an institutional investment, which is important for me, because I don't see developing medicines unless you have institutional capital behind you. I hope you enjoyed those highlights. And I'd love to know what you think about this company in that comment section below, ladies and gentlemen. And I'm gonna advise you to do your research farther because all it comes down to is that research and what these drugs are capable of. And again, keep in mind, they haven't been looked at since the 50s and 60s. So if you believe in the research that currently exists and you believe with the team they have, that they have the highest likelihood of getting FDA approval because they have the A team, guys. I mean, that is what you're gonna be betting on. And then it's just the time horizon. You have to be willing to sit on this investment five, 10 years maybe 15 i wouldn't i wouldn't stretch it as far as 15 but it definitely has the capability of maybe being another five or 10 year time horizon i would rather make that gamble on a company like this than you know i feel like the outcome is much higher than a lottery ticket that's like one in 42 million so if you guys enjoyed the information i shared slap a like let me know what you think so if you guys enjoyed the information i shared slap a like and i look so forward to catching up with you tomorrow